Hello and welcome to another command block tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be going over some changes coming to the execute command. Currently, as you can see at the top right area of my screen under game settings, I have upcoming creator features on. It's currently the only way to use this version of the execute command. However, it is likely that at some point in the future, this is going to be the main version of the execute command and they're going to deprecate the old version. Uh, if you're using this version, the old version of the execute command won't work. Any command blocks you made in the old version will work, but if you try to do it by typing in chat, or if you try to make a new execute command, or even if you change one of your old execute commands, you will need to update to the new format. So today, I'm going to be taking you through every single part of the new execute command. So as you can see, there's a lot of examples over here. And we're also going to be showing you how to update a few of the old versions into the new versions. Uh, there's only going to be a few examples of these because once you see it done, it's actually pretty simple. All right, so to start off, uh, this is the very basic form of the execute command. We have execute, then we have run. And so the main thing to know with the new execute command, we'll always start with execute and it will always end with the word run. Then after that, I'm just using a simple particle command. You guys can obviously use any other command that you want. So you'll see, turn it on, and it works flame. All right, so next we have positions. So this is when you want to change the coordinates. Now these can be exact coordinates or they can be relative coordinates, it doesn't matter. And so in this example we have execute, then we have the word positioned, then we obviously have our coordinates which is simply one block above the command block, and then of course we end it with run, then we have the same particle command. So you can see now we have the flame but it's starting up one block higher than this one is. All right, next we have at. So this is when you want the command to be positioned at an entity. Now this is very important. This doesn't mean that the entity is the one running the command, and you'll see what I mean when I get to the next example. This simply changes the location of the command, and it's based on an entity, and it can be multiple entities. However, this will only change the location. That's important to keep in mind. So you can see when I turn this on, it's gonna be putting flames on me. So right now I have a set of two all players. All right. Then we can also combine at and position together. So you can see we have at A and then positioned three blocks up. So that's relative coordinates, three blocks. So this will be above my head. Wherever I go, I'm going to get a little trail of fire above me. All right. Now we have the as command. So this makes it work as though the entity itself is the one doing the command. However, what's really important to notice is that it's not going to change the location of the command based on the entity. It's just going to pretend that the entity is the one doing it. Um, in this command, it's basically as at all players, and then it's going to be positioned three blocks in front of where the player is looking. However, you see when I turn this on, because I didn't use at, the center of this little circle. So it's going to take my rotation into account. As you can see, it's moving as I rotate. No matter how far away I am, it's still going to have the center of the thing is going to be the command block because I did not use at to change its position. So if I want to do the same thing here, where I use as and at and position, it's going to do the same thing except I will be the center of this thing. You can see it's going to be wherever I'm looking as this particle trail starts. Uh, one thing you will notice is that my feet, because uh, the way commands work, it's actually looking at where your feet are looking, not your head. It's kind of weird, but that's how it works. And so you can combine all of these three together to do something like what I'm doing here. Usually when you combine all of these three together, like in this example, this is more or less how the execute command used to work. If you basically combine as and at with the same parameters, and then you can use position to add whatever coordinates you want. This is basically how you did the old command. So following that, we then have if and unless. So to show off if, I'm going to use the scoreboard here. I already set it up earlier. So in this example, we have the execute, and we're just going to use position so you can see the flame a little bit better. Then we have if. So this is only going to work if whatever I put after that is true. So in here, we're using score, and that's just representing that I'm using, I'm testing for a scoreboard. Then we're using the word test, and you can see here on the right side of my screen, it says test. 
That's what we're checking for. And then the scoreboard I have is also called score. So it's now checking the score scoreboard. It's seeing if it matches one. And if it does, then it's going to run. You can see currently it does match one. I'm looking at test, not test two. So it's going to run. If I change test to two, it stops. Change it back, it starts. Pretty simple. Now on the other side, we have the exact same command here with one change. Instead of if, I wrote unless, which kind of does what you think it probably would do. So this will only work if the test does not match one, or as long as whatever the statement after it is false, unless is going to power it. So in this example, because one, because test matches one right now, it's not going to work. As soon as it doesn't match one, though, it will turn on. All right. And I'm just going to use if for the rest of these examples, but be aware that unless is also going to work for all of these following examples. So just be aware of that. I'm only going to use if from now on, but unless does work for everything else here. All right. Now we can also compare multiple scores together. So in this example, we're seeing if the score is set up the same way, so it's checking for a scoreboard value. So if test within the score scoreboard is equal to test two within the same scoreboard, then it's going to run the particle. In this example, currently you can see test two is two, test one is one. So they're not gonna work. But now that they're equal, they will work. And obviously if I hit this again, it stops. However, in this example, we're now going to see, we're going to compare without equals. So in this example, it's only going to work if test one is less than test two. So currently it is because one is less than two. If we make them equal, it's not going to work. And you can use all of your uh, different comparative symbols for this, just however you want to compare your scores, same way that you would with uh, scoreboard operations, that kind of thing. All right, and then next, we're going to be doing if entity. So in this example, we're going to have the if, we're going to have the word entity to say it's checking for an entity. And in this example, we're just going to test for one named Guppy Duck, for a player named Guppy Duck. If it finds one, it's going to run the particle. As you can see, because my name is Guppy Duck, it's going to work. If I were to go in here and uh, change it, it's not going to find it. It's not going to work. Now we can also do the same thing. So if an entity, if it detects an entity who is not named Guppy Duck, then it's going to work. In this case, it's not going to find one. If I change it, so in this case, it's looking for any player not named Guppy Duck one, and it's going to find one because I am named Guppy Duck. All right. Then lastly, we have if block and then blocks. So in this example, it is going to check at this exact coordinates, which is negative 6, 60, negative 27. If there is a grass block there, run the particle commands. So I'm going to turn this on, and this is this block right here. You can see as soon as the block is there, flames are going to start. If not, and now it's also checking for only a grass block. So only a grass block is going to make this work. All right, so that's basically the simple version of if block. Then you can also add, you can see I, in this version, I just check for grass. And as soon as grass is over, I hit run. However, we can also check for the ID values of different items. So in this case, I'm using wool. Right here, I'm checking the coordinates for a wool with an ID value of one, which is orange wool. So you'll see when I turn this on, I can put white wool here and it's not gonna work because it's only checking for orange. As soon as I put orange here, however, then it's going to work. And lastly, we have if blocks. So in this example, we are going to be checking for basically if two areas of blocks are exactly the same. So right here, this is the coordinates. You can read them here. That's basically in this, we're going to use two sets of coordinates to set up a cube and then one set of coordinates to set up the corner of an area that we're going to compare it to. So right now I have these two blocks are the areas that I'm checking. 
for the first set, and then these two is what it's comparing it to. You can see now that I turned it on, as long as they're exactly the same, then it is going to work. As soon as they're not, it's like I said, it's pretty self-explanatory once you kind of see it in action. But it's basically it's going to be checking these two different areas and making sure they're exactly the same. And if they are, then it's going to work. Remember, you can always change any of these to unless as well. So if I were to change this to unless, now it's only going to work if they're not the same. As soon as they are the same, it's going to stop working. And that just about wraps up everything that the X2 commands in the new version have to offer. So I'm going to round out the video with discussing how you can change some of the old versions of the commands to the new one. And then I'm going to discuss my thoughts on the X2 command and then finish up the video. All right, so in this example, this is just a very simple X2 command. It's basically saying, hey, put a particle above a player's head. Simple as that. This is the old version. You have execute then whatever entity you're trying to target, then a set of coordinates, and that's it. Then you run your command. New version, very simple. Since I don't really care in this version what the player is, I just need their position. I'm only going to use at, and then I'm going to use at a, run, and then the particle. In this version, it's very similar. It's almost the exact same command as the old one. Just simple selector, set of coordinates, and then the particle. However, it is caring about what I'm looking at. And since it's caring what I'm looking at, then I do need to have an as command to it. And then, otherwise, it's exactly the same as the last one. Really, the important thing to know when you're converting old commands into new commands with the XU is if you simply add as followed by the, the entity argument and at followed by the entity argument then it's going to be exactly the same as how it worked in the old version. And then you just end it with run. If you want to add coordinates, you also add positioned in there. However, if you're just going to use the, these as your coordinates, then you don't need to do it. You can just skip positioned altogether. However, if you have like above an entity's head, that kind of thing, you add positioned, you add as, and you add at. And it's going to work exactly the same, and then you just add the word run at the end. And finally, because we also had the detect version, here is what it would look like. In this version, we're just detecting if there's grass below the player. If so, run a particle command. And in this version, it's very similar. We're using an as and we're using an at. Then we're also doing an if, so then check the block. If it's below the player and it's grass, run the particle command. Another nice thing about the change to the way it detects blocks is we don't, we are no longer required to put an ID here. You used to have to do an ID, which meant if you wanted to check if a player is in water, uh, but you didn't care if it was flowing or non-flowing or what degree of flowing it was, you would have to put an ID for every single possible state of water. You no longer have to do that, which is really, really nice. All right, that's about it for the tutorial. I just want to round out my personal thoughts on this for any of those who care. Originally, when I saw the change in how it works and how they were no longer making the old version worked, I was slightly upset. Um, I thought that the new version was simply a lot longer and could potentially be more confusing without adding any new things you can do with it. And while it is true that there's actually nothing new you can currently do with these commands, in the sense that there was another way to do everything you can do now with these commands, for some of the more complicated things, it's now a lot easier to do a lot of these more complicated systems with the new XU command. It is a little more convoluted and complicated for some of the more simple versions of the XU command. However, for the complicated ones, sometimes it would require three or four command blocks string to do what you can now do with a single command block. So overall, I would say this is a good change. I also think it's gonna make it a little bit easier for new players to get into. Um, but that just about rounds up my thoughts. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I will try to get to them. Uh, if I don't, you can always join our Discord. We have a lot of people on there who can also help, including myself. Uh, we run events on the weekends now, as you can probably see with our streams. And that's about it. Have a good day.